so regularly uh, without your knowledge i am noting down everything because number of attendance in last year it was really very good but this year maybe staying at home for longer duration so i will not blame anyone but i have taken some attendance uh, i mean looking at the screen i have marked it in any way so uh, and the another chapter i wrote i'll send later i'll send a mail automatic generation control i'll not do that uh, this time uh, this time uh, two chapters i have re reduced right and uh, after finishing this only when everything will be over generally i set question paper before that i do not so it will be two hours question paper and maybe four questions will be given and from this only what i suggest if you have little bit of time right uh, because all the numericals cannot be explained here or i'll try to find out because previous chapter also let me finish this that my nptel if you see that all the all the numericals have been explained like anything right if you have some time you'll see that nptel course that is power system analysis right uh, so uh, that course uh, actually uh, all over india many teachers students every year they are taking it right and they're writing exam also and that question if you see then i doubt uh, whether anybody can do it 100 out of 100 or not right some of the questions are different questions right but anyway still i have found that some students are exceptional uh, right in that course so many of them have scored 90 above i uh, mean not many at least some percentage maybe 8 10 student out of say 3 400 or even more right and at least once or twice i found someone scored 100 out of 100 right all the questions will be different that questions right in any way uh, not easy that the, all the questions are not easy there right in any way so if you have a time you please look into that there you can find i have used the different color blue color green color red color and everything has been explained now let us come to this numerical then we'll go to something new it is given that this is like a this is like a solving circuit theory problem i take this problem it is given by the maximum steady state power capability of a system consisting of a generator equivalent reactance is 0.4 per unit connected to an infinite bus through a series reactance of 1.0 per unit. The terminal voltage of the generator is given that held constant. It is no variation 1.10 and the voltage of the infinite bus is 1.0. By chance, if it is not mentioned that voltage infinite bus voltage, you will assume that it is 1.0 and its frequency also will remain constant if it is a 50 hertz system it will be 50 hertz it will be 60 hertz system 60 hertz because other system which is connected to that actually infinite bus means it's a huge system huge generating capacity so if if the uh, if the um, gen gen your generating system connected to that system any disturbance coming to the smaller system will not affect that uh, your dynamics of the uh, your infinite bus side generator right that's why generators rather that's why voltage and frequency will remain constant right so now this example is given all data are given if you look at the circuit diagram this is a generator terminal eg angle delta this is magnitude right understandable the generator is given 0.4 per unit so this is 0.4 per unit and this terminal voltage is given your what you call uh but to a series reactor the terminal generator held 1.10 per unit right this terminal voltage is 1.1, but this angle you have to take, this is magnitude is given. Its magnitude is given, but it is written 1.1 angle theta. Theta you need to determine, right? You have to this. And this side is well, your, uh, your uh, this uh, 1.0, that series reactance, right? This is given as 1.0 through a series reactance 1.0. This is 1.0. And this is infinite volt, mass voltage. So this is one angle zero, right? You will also assume it is one angle zero because frequency will remain constant. So no deviation, hence the angle will also remain constant. So this is one angle zero degree. Now using this, you have to solve it. Now if you apply KVL or this thing, then EG angle delta is equal to this terminal voltage VT plus JXD into I. Current flowing through this I and this is your XD. So EG angle delta is this. Now, now I is equal to, this I is equal to, you can write from here, VT minus b this is vt minus b right uh, divided by jx right so this is 1.1 angle theta minus 1 angle 0 divided by j1 right this is reactance j1 therefore this i you substitute here and simplify then eg angle delta is equal to this one plus j.4 into this one this i right now if you if you now separate real and imaginary part 
the, uh, from this equation, then you will get your what you call that EG angle delta is given this much minus j 1.54 sine theta, right? Now, if you if you make this, the maximum steady state power capability limit is reached when delta is equal to 90 degree. That is, you know, EG VT upon x sine uh, uh, delta. If delta is 90 degree, then your what you call there is a maximum uh, steady state power limit capability. If delta is 90 degree, therefore the real part of this is zero. That means this part is 0, 1.54 cos theta minus 0.4 is equal to 0. Therefore, theta is equal to 74.9 degree, right? Therefore, magnitude of EG will be is equal to 1.54 because this is 0. So, magnitude we are taking, so J is gone. So, 1.54 sine of 74.9 degree, that is 1.48 per unit. Therefore, VT is equal to 1.1, angle theta is we got got 74.9 degree and maximum voltage that eg va where your p max eg into v upon xt plus x that is your this is your eg and this is your infinite bus v right so eg into v upon xd plus x whatever it comes that is 1.061 per unit right this is that this is your uh, for this problem so this is a simple problem but several times little bit data or this date i think earlier also in the past when i have taught I have given this kind of problem, but most of the students could not get the full answer. Anyway, next is the equal area criterion. This is actually a true for single machine infinite bus system, right? So how to do this? Actually, in the uh, your preceding discussions, we have indicated that a solution to the swing equation for delta T leads to determination of the stability of a single machine operating as a part of a large power system, right? So now, however, Solution of swing equation is not always necessary to investigate the system stability. Rather, we'll go for this is true for single machine infinite system. Otherwise, for multi machine system, you need to go for your iterative method and your computer, uh, your what you call code, you have to write. Rather, in some cases, a direct approach may be taken. Such an approach is based on equal area criteria. Now, we know we have seen that m d squared delta upon dt square is pi minus p, right, p, right. So pi is the input power or sap power and p is the electrical power output. Or m d squared dt square is equal to p a, that is accelerating power, right. So now when pi uh, minus p, when it is accelerating when pi greater than p, when pi less than p, it will be decelerating. That we'll see a little bit later, right. Or, or d squared delta upon dt square, it is capital P actually, not small p, a typographical error, capital P upon m, right. Now, if you look into this from your general knowledge, right, uh, suppose this is your plotting delta versus t, suppose graph is going like this, oscillatory and dying out, so at this point d delta by dt is equal to 0, right, that means system will remain stable, right, but if it is unstable, it will go on increasing. It will go on increasing, right? It is starting from somewhere and goes shooting up like anything. So system is unstable, right? Another thing is that it may go instead of dying out, it may go continuously or continuous oscillation. That is called oscillatory uh, stable, but those are beyond the scope, right? So for a system, it must be that d delta by dt is equal to zero at some point. So this criteria, d delta by dt zero, can simply can simply be obtained from equation your 39. Now how we will do it? This is equation is d, delta, d square delta upon dt square is equal to p upon m. Now this equation, this equation both side you multiply by 2 d delta by dt. Both side you multiply 2 d delta by d delta by dt. Then what you do? You integrate. If you integrate, this side will be d delta by dt whole square is equal to 2 by m. Then initial angle is delta 0 some initial angle to some delta is uh, your integration of PA d delta, right? So multiply both sides 2 delta by dt, then you integrate, then it will be d delta dt square is equal to 2 i 2 i m delta 0 delta PA delta, right? Now, PA, PA is equal to PI minus P accelerating power and delta 0 is the initial power angle before the rotor begins to swing up a disturbance. I mean, some disturbance means load is increasing or decreasing continuously, but some disturbance uh, before that, that initial operating angle was delta 0. For stability criteria, d delta by dt is equal to 0 because for stability, this condition we have to apply, d delta by dt is equal to 0. So in this equation, if you say d delta by dt is equal to 0, right, then you basically you will get it, the integration of delta 0 delta pa d delta is equal to 0. These conditions require that the stability, the area under the graph of accelerating power pa versus delta must be 0 for some value of delta. That is the positive area, that is accelerating area we call, right, or accelerating energy under the graph must be equal to the 
negative one that is relating energy this criteria is therefore known as equal area criterion but how things happen suppose uh, this is your what you call this is actually pi zero that this corresponding angle delta zero this is the initial operating power input power this is pi zero and this is this graph is sine p is equal to p max sine delta right now what happens suppose suddenly whatever is written there you read that is different thing whatever is written what suddenly this pi zero has increased from pi zero to pi that means from here suddenly it has gone up that means at that time as soon as it has gone up at that time pi is greater than your p in because initially that p is zero when when you are uh, you are here in this equation when delta is equal to delta zero then p is equal to p zero so p zero is equal to p max sine delta zero and at that time p zero is equal to pi zero it was totally at that initial operating condition and i assume that perfectly balanced right uh, energy perfectly power balance right now this point is a now as soon as all of a sudden input power sap power is increased it has gone to this that means pi is greater than at the time is p because p is sine delta zero because it has gone up so that means your pa accelerating power pa is equal to pi minus p so rotor will accelerate right actually rotor will accelerate everything will accelerate together because turbine and generator it is coupled together in a power plant right so as soon as it started accelerating then it will move from point a to point b right because it will try to catch that electrical power, power will increase it will try to catch this p, p, point b so this is called accelerating power uh, this graph under this call accelerating energy now but as it is accelerating it will go on it will go beyond this point c right and such that when uh, now as soon as it will go beyond this at that time electrical power is greater than that input power so at that time it will decelerating so it will come up to this only when this area or this energy accelerating energy is equal to decelerating energy but after going there it will actually what will happen that after just hold on i'm making it actually you see also my nptl there i have uh, shouted uh, several times so if it is like this so it will go it is it is sine curve it is some point here initial point pi zero then it has it has raised to this point say pi right and this is your accelerating area and this is your decelerating area this point is a this point is b and this point is c but after reaching to this point it will finally stable point is this one because at this point it will come because electrical power is equal to input power right p is equal to pi so what will happen after reaching to this it will not stop there so what will happen it will go back and forth it will come here then again it will come here to this again it will go like this this will oscillate around this point finally it will settle right so uh, uh, because this is ultimately it is a stable point this is it is a stable point so what will happen then then it will go up to see that accelerating energy beating where we are is equal to decelerating energy but it will actually oscillate around this point for some time right it is a huge mass so it will move back and forth back and forth finally it will settle to b right then system will remain stable therefore this is whatever is written there you read whatever i am telling that is written here also you please see if you have time spend some time that your my nptl course go to transient stability analysis right and there finally it will settle to be so mathematically what will happen area under this cup a1 is equal to a2 that means what will happen you have to integrate from delta 0 to delta 1 and this is delta 1 to delta 2 this area and this area both are equal this is called equal area criteria so if you look into this look delta 0 to delta 1 here it is pi and here it is p or what you call p max sine delta so pi pi minus p max sine delta integration zero, delta 0 to delta 1 integration delta 0 to delta 1 d delta right is equal to the delta 1 to delta 2 right if you if you look into now decelerating area then it is p max sine delta because here your p is greater than this pi so that's why delta d delta your delta 1 delta 2 p max sine delta minus pi d delta right this two simple equation area 1 is equal to area 2 now you simply integrate if you integrate and then if you do integrate what will happen that your pi is equal to your this thing your what you call that um, uh, pi pi is equal to p max sine delta one when delta is equal to delta one when delta is equal to delta one right in this equation in this equation at that time pi will match so pi is equal to actually what will happen p max sine delta one so that's why you are writing that here pi is equal to p max sine delta one because when delta is equal to delta one this pi is equal to p max sine delta one right so there you put or put all these things 
all these things and put simplify then what we will get after simplifying all these things delta 2 minus delta 0 sin delta 1 plus cos delta 2 minus delta 0 right is equal to 0 this is a non-linear equation this is a non-linear equation delta 0 will be known right suppose delta 0 is known right and delta 1 delta 2 may uh, unknown or something iterative process is necessary but this is a non-linear equation so this is the condition valid for this equal area criterion now take one small example right then you will be knowing so maximum thing what will happen that what will be this this is your that means it is going up to delta 2 now what will be the maximum value of delta 2 such that after that during this time your machine will not lose synchronism right so when what will be the maximum value of delta 2 beyond which that system will lose uh, machine will lose synchronism so second diagram is some exam like uh, some numerical type of thing is taken suppose a synchronous generator capable of uh, okay that i'll tell later this this is thing suppose this is accelerating area and then what will be the maximum one so maximum one, this is pi this is the maximum that is delta 2 can go so delta 2 is equal to delta m right so basically there so delta 2 is equal to delta m and from symmetry you can find out what will be value of delta 1 also pi minus delta m like this is this side is delta 1 and from here to here also right so question is that it can go up to this if it goes this angle is go beyond this then what will happen this is accelerating this is decelerating if angle goes beyond this uh, somewhere at this point then what will happen at the time pr pi will be greater than your p right uh, so at because at this point any point pi will be greater than p the machine will start accelerating and it will lose synchronism right so this is the maximum one that is delta m can go right and delta m is equal to basically if you look into this it will be pi minus delta one from symmetry right so now <laughs> this example is given that is a synchronous generator capable of developing 500 megawatt power per phase right that is per phase power operates at a power angle of 8 degree that is delta zero by how much can the input sap power be increased suddenly without loss of stability Assume that P max will P max will remain constant. So initially, delta zero is equal to eight degree, and P zero P max sine zero sine delta zero rather. So five hundred sine eight 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 degree. So sixty nine point six megawatt. That is P zero. So here it is typo typo is missing. Here it is P zero. At this point, it is P zero. Right. And this is A one accelerating area. This is A two decelerating area. Right. Now if you put in this equation. If you look into this equation, delta 2 minus delta 0 sine delta 1, right? So if you look into that, that pi minus delta 1 minus delta 0, right? If you look into the uh, this equation, the delta 2 minus delta 0 sine delta 1, right? Here also that your delta 2 is nothing but your, um, uh, your uh, re replace delta 2 by delta m because this equation is delta m, right? Delta 2 and delta m and delta m nothing but pi minus delta 1 right so that is that is actually make pi minus delta 1 minus delta 0 sine delta 1 minus cos delta 1 minus cos delta 0 is equal to 0 from the symmetry you can make out right and therefore this equation if you look into that when delta 0 is 8 degree that is 0 0.139 radian convert everything in radian this is a non-linear equation because 3 minus delta 1 into sine delta 1 minus cos delta 1 minus 0 0.990 so to get this to get the solution you need an iterative method to solve it i will not ask you to do any iterative method what i will what i will uh, tell you that a uh, little bit from your intuition you try by trial and error right try by trial and error and uh, and if and just put those delta 1 value here in terms of radian right and just see whether approximately left hand side approximately coming to 0 or not right i will accept that answer little bit you have to you know from your intuition you have to try some values right so the, uh, therefore uh, but though this is actually whatever we have got this is iteratively if you do it it will be delta 1 is equal to 50 degree right you make it in radian after that here you put everything in radian after that you change it to degree so iteratively it is actually uh, when i was writing this i asked one of my students to get this uh, one for using newton raphson method perhaps right so to get the solution so it is 50 degree iteratively right so if delta one is 50 degrees so on p effective that is maximum one that is your 500 sine 50 degrees so 383.02 megawatt right initial power developed by the machine was 69.6 megawatt therefore further it can be increased that is pef minus pe0 that is 383.02 minus this one that is per phase 313.42 megawatt per phase therefore it is per phase so multiply by three so total will be this much input of sap power right 
up to this hopefully it will be understandable just a simple geometry this kind of i mean not equally refactored here but this kind of mathematics you have done enough everywhere right so little bit you have to try but this non-linear equation will be there. Here I cannot help you, but from your intuition, you have to, your what to call, you have to put some trial and error. Approximately, you need not go to exact 0 or 0, 0.00 something. Some 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.1 also, I'll accept that. Just trial and error, right? No need to do this. Now, another thing is, that is your critical clearing angle and critical clearing time. All right, this is a very simple thing. What will happen? Whatever is written here, you read that, no problem. Suppose you have a machine, right? So this is input power, shaft input power, transformer is there, circuit breaker is there. Here also circuit breaker is there. This is infinite bus, right? Basically single machine, infinite bus. Now, fault has occurred at the general terminal. Fault has occurred here. Now, initially what happened? That initially, that machine was operating at PI, right? That is input shaft power and it perfectly balanced and angle was delta zero. So PI is equal to your P max sine delta zero, right? All of a sudden, a fault has occurred, line to ground fault, three phase line to ground fault. As soon as a fault will happen, the terminal voltage will become zero, right? So as soon as terminal voltage will be zero, then power delivered by the machine will be zero. So from this here, what will happen? It was operating, all of a sudden fault has happened. So terminal voltage has become zero. So no power delivered. So all the time from, PI, from this point, it will come down to this point. It will jump to B point, right? So no power delivered because fault has occurred, terminal voltage is zero, right? Uh, as soon as your, it has come to that, it will start accelerating along this line. But at some point when angle is at some time, right, equivalent to your delta C, we call critical clearing angle. Suppose uh, now fault is cleared, right, and circuit is connected. As soon, but before that, it has moved from delta zero to delta C. From this point, this is your accelerating energy. And from this point, suddenly uh, fault is cleared, so it will jump to this point, right? At that time, electrical power is greater than your mechanical power. So it will start decelerating. So it will go to this point, right? Up to this accelerating energy to decelerating energy. But same philosophy will happen. It will oscillate around point D. And finally, it will step to this point, right? So that means this area is equal to this area. So this is a rectangle. So this is uh, your, uh, this height is PI and this uh, your what you call, and this width is delta C minus delta zero. So PI into delta C minus delta zero, this area is equal to you integrate from delta C to delta one and find out that your what you call that P max, uh, P max sine delta minus PI and integral and your what you call your in limit delta C to delta one D delta, right? So this is why PI, this is a rectangle. So PI delta C minus delta zero is equal to delta C to delta one P minus PI D delta. That is P max sine delta minus PI D delta. Now you integrate, right? Integrate and if you do so, if you integrate, and make all this condition p is equal to p max sine delta integrate and pi is equal to p max sine delta zero because at delta zero your pi is equal to p max sine delta zero put everything right if you do so then you will get another non-linear equation this is your uh, cos delta c is equal to cos delta one plus delta one minus delta zero into sine delta zero right now this delta is called the critical your clearing angle right but after certain then delta will clear some approximate value. So delta C is clearing angle and delta zero is, zero is the initial power angle. And delta one is equal to power angle. Two is the rotor advances, that is overshoot. This is your delta one, right? The rotor advances. Finally, it will come to this point. It will come to settle to this point. But maximum, the rotor can advance up to delta one, right? And then, so this is the, the thing. Now, in order to determine the clearing time, we rewrite this equation with P is equal to zero. Right, since we have a three phase fault, so d square or delta upon dt square, but this is this is you have seen from your equation uh, 20, 11.20 uh, it is written. So, equation 20 for this chapter pi, pi f upon h, so pi minus p, but as fault has a uh, three phase fault, suddenly from this to this region, the power is zero. That's why it is your uh, your uh, what you call pi f h, uh, pi f by h from pi, this from equation 20. Now, this is a small exercise to you, right. Uh, this is, I will not do. This is, a, this equation 51 is a small exercise for you. You have to, you, this initial condition is given, t is equal to zero, d delta by dt is equal to zero. Twice you have to integrate, and you have to get this delta is equal to pi f upon 2 h pi t square plus delta zero, right? This is a small exercise for you. In the class also, I never used to do that. I used to ask the student, you do it, right? This is a small exercise for you. Now, now 
TC is a clear your clearing time correspond to a corresponding to a clearing angle delta C then what will happen you put delta is equal to delta C and corresponding clearing time then T will be is equal to TC right therefore delta C will be pi F pi upon 2 H TC square plus delta 0 therefore TC is equal to under root 2 into H into delta C minus delta 0 upon pi F pi right so note that delta C can be obtained from equation uh, 49 that means this equation this from this also it is possible right and after that you can substitute here then you'll get the TC because the other data will be known to you right so this is that your what you call that if a three phase fault has occurred at the terminal of the generator so immediately power will go down because P will become zero right and now your this thing the same philosophy as before, but what will be the maximum one? This is the accelerating, this is the decelerating. If it goes somewhere here below that, naturally your shaft power will be more than that your electrical power. At that time, machine will start accelerating and lose synchronism. But this is the maximum one. So delta zero, that is delta critical C is equal to basically delta critical clearing time, and delta one is equal to delta m, right? Delta m actually is equal to pi minus delta zero from the symmetry, right? So delta m or delta one is equal to pi minus delta zero. In this equation, you have delta one. Now delta one can go maximum your delta m. That's why it is written delta one is equal to delta m and delta m is equal to pi minus delta zero from the symmetry, right? So in this equation, in this, in this equation, whatever, whatever this equation 49, you substitute those things, you substitute those things, right? So if you do so, you substitute and simplify, then you will get delta critical will be cos inverse in bracket pi minus 2 delta 0 into sine delta 0 minus cos delta 0 this thing. Therefore, critical clearing time TCR will be this much, delta CR minus this thing and this one, right? So delta C can be computed using equation 53. This data will be given. This delta CR can be easily calculated if you know delta 0, right? And here also if you know H and then F and PI, and delta 0 will be no delta CR will be calculated from here. You substitute delta C C R here. So you will get the critical clearing time, right? That is the that during that time you have to clear the fault, right? Before that, if, if this is the clearing time, some rough thing, right? If you, if the fault is cleared beyond that, there is a strong possibility that machine will lose synchronism, right? So this is the idea of the equal area criteria, right? Another condition is there. This is the last condition, right? So in this case, what happened? Suppose you consider this double circuit line, right? So this is generator and this is infinite bar. This is one, two, three, three bars, uh, three bars problem, right? Earlier we have seen without fault anything, but here now three phase fault, uh, your three phase fault will be there here in this line, right? Now a three phase short circuit for rockers on one of the line as shown in this figure uh, twelve, right? Because of the rotor inertia, the power angle cannot change instantly, right? So also, some power could still be transmitted during the fault because the terminal voltage of the generator will not be zero because it is a double circuit line, right? So initially, three graphs are there. This is under a normal condition, healthy condition, right? Right. And this is your. This is another 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 graph is there. This is during fault, and when fault is clear, this line will be healthy. So this will be graph C. Now look into this. Car A before before fault, right? And car B during the fault and car C after the fault. Such that A is equal to your what you call P max sine delta. This is P max sine delta. B will be K1 into A because it will be K1 into A. Some value will be there. there. For this one, it will go down. And C will be K2 into A. And K1 greater than K2. From your intuition, you can make out. Right. For stability, we must have area A1 is equal to area A. Therefore, what will happen? That this is a healthy condition. Right. And when fault has three phase fault has occurred, right, still some power will be there. Right. So in that case, this graph will come down to B. And after some time, what will happen? That when uh, your what to call when uh, fault is clear, that of course some power will be transferred because it is a double circuit line. This line is there. Right. So at the, so what will happen? That uh, voltage be during this fault, voltage will not be zero. Right. So some power will be transmitted. But when this line fault is clear, this line will be there. So voltage will uh, improve. 
Right. So, so that, that's why it will be, your power will be this C card, which will be your after the clearance of the sort. At that time, this line, this line is not operating. Right. right. Only this line is operating. So, so in this case, what will happen? This is PI, this is the initial operating condition, right? So as soon as, 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 soon as such things will happen, the point will come down to here. Right. The point, the point will come down to here. here. So this is your delta zero. Now, after, 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 after such this thing, some critical, uh, we are taking the delta CR, right? right. So, del delta, delta M, we are taking them for this thing. thing. So, after, after this, what will happen? happen? It, it will continue to oscillate to this point, point. Right. right? So, then, then there will be delta CR. After that, when fault is CR, yeah. right, it will jump, jump to this point. Because, because one line is there, and still the maximum thing it can come up to this. Beyond that, system will remain. I will go to same condition. So this this one is accelerating energy, and this is this lateral energy. So basic idea of it is that limit will be delta G to delta C. This will be P I minus this V car, right? Minus this V car. Is equal to your if you look into this, here limit will be delta C to delta M. This car minus this P I. Right, right. So this way you have to integrate. Just a little bit of your thing and do it. Things are very simple actually. Right. So this way that delta zero delta T I minus that big car will delta that is sine phi only and delta Z delta Z minus P R. If you substitute all, right, substitute all and if you simplify little bit you do it, huh? Little bit you do it. You will find cos delta C R equal to one upon K two minus K one into this expression. Right, right. Now P I is equal to max sine delta zero divided by delta Z delta delta zero P I is max sine delta zero is equal to K K two max sine delta M. That is K two max sine delta M dash. Right. Here we have made one one delta M dash. Right. Because from this symmetry, this is delta M dash. This is delta M. So delta M will be pi minus your delta M dash. Right. So, so if you if you just put, put all these things, 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 if you put all these things, things then then you will see the sine delta zero will become k two sine delta delta m is equal to k two sine pi minus delta. I just told right. Okay. So, so this is a simple thing. And I want k two and delta zero will be given. It will be specified. The critical carrying angle will obtain from each cells fifty pi. So all data will be given. Right. So this is the and that's all for your theory. For this is seven seven right, right. Automatic, automatic generation control. control I, I this day I, I, I thought I will make it right. Okay. So just one, one thing before going to do this thing. thing one thing, thing and after this, this thing, before going to numericals, let me tell you one thing so that I will send the mail such that this is not required. Sorry, sorry. This IT is up to 11.7, 11.8, beyond that, that is not there. there. Because, because this is an injective process, you need not know this thing. thing. But in but the class, class, I will explain, explain that, that, not, not that I will come, but I will explain that how one can get approximate solution with that directly. Because this is a by special so basically, differential solution is not one point eight. or four third term, the mass and same, they call it the testing, many numerical techniques are there, they are in manual, they will be the level. Right, right. Up to 11.7, 11.8 will not be there. Your course, right, right. Now, so you see, I have videos, right? I have videos. Now, one thing I like to tell you, just see this. I can, I can come to this. Just tell me. Already, just come along. Just come along. So, you have to have the control system, right? right. I have I have something, I have right, right, right. something, suppose, suppose one, one block is there, there. Right. say one block, one block, one block, one block, yes, 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 one, one, and another block, block is there, there. Right, right. Say one 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 Right, right. Then, then this is another problem. Yeah, yeah. Suppose, 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 this is your, your X3, right, right. This is simple the control system. system. Yeah, really in your control theory, really in your uh, control like that. This is the control theory, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your control system is stored. Right, right. Theory, theory. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, ye
two years. So two years you are staying at home, and many of you have returned to the campus also. Right, right. little bit to practice. Right, right. Because habit, habit is uh, necessary of making this thing, and uh, uh, your um, uh, anyway because you have to no question of uh, open book or anything. Book will be closed. And simple question will be given, and I have reduced the syllabus. I think four questions will be given, and the exam will be for two hours. Right. So anyway, uh, today after this class, I will go to the department. If anybody is here today, I do not know. I but I will be there because I will remain busy. But uh, you can meet me now after eleven. Any day you go after eleven. Right. If you are here, you can meet me. Right. Now a synchronous generator is connected to a large power system. That large power system means infinite bus system, right? And supplying 0.45 per unit megawatt power of its maximum power capacity, right? A three-phase power occurs, and the effective terminal voltage of the generator becomes 20% of its value before the fault, right? I told you voltage cannot be zero, right? Now when the fault is clear, I told you generator is delivering 70% of the original maximum value. Determine the critical clearing angle. So same way you plot the graph. One is before fault, and another is during the fault, and another is after fault. Right. And this is accelerating area. This is decelerating area. And same philosophy. You cannot you cannot recall this. Uh, your what you call that your uh, recall that uh, before that just hold on. Before that I have to see. I have missed some problem. Uh, here here. Uh, uh, yeah. This one I will come later. Anyway. So I have missed that one. So I, this is the fault, and you have to draw the uh, graph clearly, right? And then same diagram, whatever we have drawn before, same diagram, right? So K1 will be P max during the fault and P max before the fault. The denominator only P max before the fault, and the value is given, right? Delta zero is the power angle at the time of the fault. Delta K C R critical power, uh, power angle. Where the fault is cleared, and delta is the maximum angle of swing, right? So area one is equal to area two. So this formula is given. You know, you cannot recall this formula, right? So you have to. But I have seen one or two students. So whatever may be the formula, they some they wrote correctly in the past also. I have this kind of experience. Some of them have got gifted memory, perhaps, right? In any way. Uh, Uh, not only that, and uh, one of my old colleague. Let's listen carefully. One of my old colleague, he actually retired now. He retired four years back. He told me one very simple thing. He said he gave one problem, right? And his question is a very tricky question. Not that easy that someone can solve so easily. So what happened? He gave that question. After that, that boy has done it in just two or three steps, and final answer is written. So he didn't deduct anything. He's seen it. After that, he also he was also thinking from where he has done it because the way he has taught or he has seen many books also, right? Finally, call that boy and ask. Please explain. He explained him in such a nice fashion that he was thoroughly hundred percent convinced and gave him full marks. Just such a big problem. He did I think three or four steps. Many things he has imagined from his memory, right? And everything he has explained to him. Then he said yes. He told me. He narrated this. He told me. Uh, he told me that he has uh, done like anything, right? So he was very happy that oh, he told me he has retired. He has retired, right? In any way. So this cos delta C R is equal to one upon K two minus K one. This formula you know, right? So generator is supplying 0.45 per unit megawatt or P max, right? So therefore P I will be is, is equal to 0.45 P max, and P max is equal to P max sine delta zero, right? Therefore, delta zero will be is equal to your 26.74 or uh, degree or 0.466 radian. This is given. This data is given. 45 percent. Now, P max will be that E G B T upon X D because sine the delta delta is 90 degree, right? So this will be P max. Now, when the fault occurs, the terminal voltage falls to your 0.25, right? So B T. Therefore, K one is equal to 0.25. Right, and K two is 0.70. Everything is given in the problem. Read, read carefully. Read carefully. Everything is given, right? And then your P I is equal to K two P max sine delta m. This is also from the figure you can make out. From that you can calculate what is delta m dash. It is 40 degree or 0.698 radian. Therefore, delta m will be from symmetry pi minus delta m dash. This much of radian. Therefore, cos delta C R. This is your formula, right? If you put it, 
critical clearing angle will be this much 1.276 radian only in this book i do not know which example one wrong calculation is there i don't know this one or another one in that in that uh, nptel course there everything is correct right because that correct uh, didn't take from this one after making all correction i have recorded that one in nptel one problem is there i am not sure which one is your what you call the this one I have to also see my NPTEL, but there I calculated, recalculated, and corrected everything. So it is after that only I recorded. I found when I was doing it, I found some type of problems are there in one uni numerical, right? So in any way, second problem is also similar to that. And this one, this one, uh, a 50 hertz synchronous generator capable of supplying 400 megawatt of power is connected to a large power system that is infinite bus and is delivering 80 megawatt when a three phase fault occurs at the terminals determine the time in which fault must be cleared if the maximum power angle is to be 85 degree it is not minus huh? it is to be some dash it is given 85 degree assume h is equal to 7 second in example it may not be even megajoule per mba it will be it will be given in second only i generally give in second right on a 100 mba base B, the critical clearing angle. You know PI is equal to P max sine delta zero. So three phase power it is. 400 megawatt power is given, right? So synchronous generator supplying this one is connected to a large power system. So per phase power will be 400 by three. So this much up and PI will be 80 by three because all three phase power is given, right? So sine delta zero, you can easily find out this much of radian or degree delta zero, right? And delta one is given 85 degree. This data is given and cos delta c is equal to this much right so substitute all and you will get delta c is equal to 1.22 radian and from equation 52 tc will be this much right so p p p3 phase is 80 megawatt so 0.8 per unit convert it to that h is equal to 7 second so you substitute you will get tc is equal to 0 0.377 second or 377 millisecond right from equation 53 delta cr put all this value you will get delta cr is equal to 2.01 radian right so what you will do that one problem check with numer uh, or my nptl i have to also check it that one problem uh, some error was there in calculating error but in the nptl if that error is not there right because before recording i corrected everything then only i solve right uh, so and uh, this problem similar to that you will solve it right and uh, this problem also you will solve it and this is a double circuit problem so fault is here in the middle of line next to next class wednesday we will discuss right it will be some start delta transformation may come sometimes case looking at this thing right those things will come ultimately you have to bring it down to a simple equivalent x that's all right and all these things and uh, your syllabus is up to your up to this up to this your uh, course is up to this right for your entrance. So syllabus, I have made things for you easy. So symmetrical components, a symmetrical fault, and this uh, power system stability. These three chapters will be there for your course, right? So I'm stopping sharing, right? So, uh, so anyway, so uh, if possible, you uh, those who are in the campus, I believe many of you are now in campus, right? You can meet me only in the department after 11. If you see my light is on in the chamber means I'm here, I may be in the office or maybe somewhere uh, yeah, around that only. So if possible, you try to meet me once, right? So thank you very much. Again, sir, uh, tell me, tell me. So like I had some uh, like problems in a in a exercise question of chapter 10. Like can you share the screen so that I can tell my problem? Okay, okay, hold on. Uh, tell me, chapter 10. Yes, chapter 10, like 10.2. 10 chapter, yeah, chapter 10 also, I have to see with these numericals. I, I have solved only one or two numericals. I explained 10.2. Yes, sir. Just hold on, just hold on. You see, 11 is going on. Ah, this one you are telling. Uh, sir, can you share the screen? Uh, let's ah, right, 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 right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, how to do this? Hold on. Uh, that's uh, here, here, here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, this 10.2. Yes, sir. Here, like, uh, for the... Uh, Only zero sequence, the... zero sequence problem, right? Uh, you, are, you are asking for zero sequence diagram? 
it's what I'm asking like for the transformer like what are the values of the positive sequence and negative sequence reactances for uh, the transformer in in this transformer is a static device right so in the initially the when i made this transformer thing z1 is equal to z2 right if you look into this it is a static device it is not a rotating device uh, i have to go to transformer only first hey, you should you should go to that uh, i also uh, this thing why transformer has gone initially you made it no which chapter it has gone 10 chapter chapter 10 no? first find out initially all these things have been made hold on transformer generator it is to line to ground fault is it chapter 9 or uh, unbalanced fault i think previous chapter here 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 sir yeah uh, just hold on just hold on let him find let me find out his thing right and it is there transformer synchronous generator who i also forget which chapter right hold on hold on uh this is your sequence impedance of transformers right so this is for synchronous generator sequence impedance for transformer you read this uh, actually you have to see this all these connections right according to the connections you have to made it and if you look that it is a static device so all are equal sequence impedance for this is a static device z1 z2 and z0 is equal to equal general leakage reaction it's all are equal ha huh, tell me Sir, also, also in that question, the power factor of uh, motor is not mentioned. Like at which, which power factor it is operating? Uh, so, yes, sir, like ten, ten point two. Yes, sir. Only in that question. Just hold on. Just hold on. If it is there, okay. I, I, I know. Just hold on. Just hold on. Hold on. Ten point two. No, it is ten point five. Oh, oh, oh. So actually, ten point two exercise. Exercise ten point two. Ah, right, right, right. Two seventy four page. Ah, okay, okay. Two seventy one, two seventy two. If it is not there, I have to check my handwritten thing. Why it has gone? Ah, uh, here, here you are telling motor power factor is not given. Yes, sir. Just, 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 uh, just give me one minute time. Let me just few second time find the fault current is. Both the machines are rated at this, and transformers are this. It's like the transmission lines reactances are this. And this is the reactance of the neutral ground grounding to this. Oh, yeah, just a minute. Figure ten point two four. This was the way we will go. So this is find out the current phase of CG one. Both the machines are one six point. Uh, generator and motor both are this. No. So in this case, you are telling that. Acha, okay. Just one minute. Don't assume now. If it is not there, you will assume point eight eight five. But let me get back to you on Wednesday. Just go through it once, right? If uh, Just uh, when is the morning? We'll discuss. Right. Previous example also. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Sir, uh, also in nine point four, sir, exercise. Nine point four. Yes, nine point four. Yes, sir. Nine point four means exercise. Yes, sir. Hold, hold on, hold on. Is number two for the data? Data is missing. I have to find out my handwritten notes. Why it has gone then? Because in the connection of a transformer is not given. Like in which way the transformer is connected? Uh, I just told the nine point four. No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Two forty eight, sir. Two forty-eight. Hold on. Is which page? Two fifty-seven. Oh, it will have to go up. Nine. Ha. Ah, here it will come. Ha. Ah, what we are telling? Nine point four. Sir. Ha. Ah, tell me. In the second side, sir, there is a transformer, but its winding connection is not mentioned. Like which, which, which? He did T one, T two, or this one. Uh, that motor with the motor. Oh, motor, oh mo motor. Uh, this uh, this transformer. No, are you? Are you? I ask you. I let me one thing. It is a typographical error. I have to check my original thing. I have to search it where it is. I if it is not given. No, if it is not given, you assume anything and draw the zero sequence diagram. Okay. Right. Sir. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Right, this is delta delta. It will circulate. It will remain open. This star delta here. It will remain open because it is delta. And uh, this is star grounded. If you say this kind of side is grounded, this side will be open or uh, closed. But from this side, it will remain open. And if you make both star star, then uh, from here it will be connected. Right. So something we will discuss on Wednesday. Right. Okay. So you you ask you anything. Right. I have to also check. Okay then. Okay then. Stop saying. Okay. Sending, yeah? okay then.
Okay then, thank you very much. So I have to go to department now. Okay, thank you.